Hey there. First off, I want to thank you for purchasing this year end review and vision setting workbook. And if we've never met before, my name is Hillary Johnson. I'm the founder and CEO of Hatch Tribe and I coach and mentor business owners just like you. The truth is building a business takes a lot of time and energy and resources, and it's so easy to get trapped inside your business. What you're about to do through this workbook is what we call working on your business, not just being in your business. And this is one of the most important things you will learn how to do as you continue to grow in your business and truly become the CEO that your business needs you to be. Now, the reason this is really important is that there are lots of things that will draw your attention and your energy in your business. And if we lose sight of where we're headed, we will often wind up where we didn't intend to go and where, frankly, we don't want to be. So through this exercise, we will first be working on the review part, really looking at what's happening in your business and as objectively as possible, getting a sense of what's working, what's not, and some things that probably need to change. Then in the second part, you're going to be setting vision. And this is very much about tapping into your desire and understanding what you want is going to differ from what I want or what perhaps any other person wants. It's unique to you. And when you get very clear about that, it makes it very easy to build a business that's in alignment so that you can have a very joyful life and a very joyful business. They very much intersect. So the purpose of this video is simply to walk you through the document. So I'd encourage you just watch this straight through and then go ahead and dig into the workbook. So let's start by digging into the year end review itself first. The first thing you're going to kick off with is some celebration. And I want you to know the more you celebrate what's happening in your business, the more likely you are to stay motivated and committed to the goals that you're pursuing. Then I want you to take a peek at the gaps. We have to be able to look objectively at what's happening in our businesses and say, ah, we're a little bit off the mark here, or like, hey, we're way off the mark, and get curious about why. I encourage you to get curious without letting self-judgment get in the way. Then I want you to look at the ecosystem of your entire existence. You know, your life is made up of a lot more than just work and life. So I want you to look at each one of these buckets and ask yourself, how is it being influenced by your business? Is it positive or negative and in what way? Then you're going to walk through every single one of these questions and give yourself a rating on the scale from one strongly disagree to 10 strongly agree. At the end, you're going to add up each of these scores and it's going to relate to what you'll find on this page, which is each of these buckets is an area of your business that may need some attention. So you'll find that each of these relates to something that's critically important for your ability to grow and scale your business. And that of course is directly linked to your own version or your own definition of success. Then I want you to do a SWOT analysis. If you've never done it before, there's some explanation here of what that looks like. These are of course very important to do because it's allowing you to see not only what's happening inside your business, but what's happening outside of it and what you may need to pay attention to. Then I want you to start playing out some versions of what happens if you keep doing things as you are. Just walk through the questions, answer them as best you can. And then we're going to start to bring all of that together into some key insights. What will you continue? What will you stop? What will you start? And then describe your year in a way that feels really empowering. And that's going to wrap up the review part, except for these couple of things that are metrics. And to be clear, everything up to that point is qualitative. It's how you feel about it. It's how you think about it. These last two are about data. They're putting numbers to things that are really important. So I want you to look at your financial performance and some key metrics. And this is where I'd encourage you to look at things like prospects, website data, social media data, anything that you felt like is important throughout the course of the year. And perhaps you've already been tracking these. Then of course we will move into the vision and intention setting. So I'd encourage you at this point, maybe get up, go take a break, stretch your legs and come back to this. We want to be in a bit more of a dreamy state, allowing ourselves and our brain to just see possibility. So I find that breaking these two things apart is typically very good. So at this point, when you're ready and your mind is right, let yourself dream a little bit. I want you to start by answering what does success mean to you? It's really important that you're clear on your definition because it doesn't need to, and it probably isn't how others define it. 
Then I want you to dream about what the next five years could look like, assuming that you're getting in full alignment with exactly what you want. Then I want you to get clear on what you desire, looking at each of these domains and asking yourself what you want and why you want it. The why becomes really important for tapping into our motivation. Then I want you to examine what you're, you're envisioning, what you dream of for your business itself. And the reason this comes at the end of all this other visioning work is because your business is just a facet of your life. It's not life as a whole. And so instead of starting with the, the business vision, we start with our life vision so that the business is then built in alignment with what you actually want. Then I want you to tap into the feeling of it, meaning how would you want to feel as you go into the next year? Then you're going to set some intentions. I've listed out here the possibility for up to 10, but it's okay if you don't have 10, it's enough. And it's at least enough to start putting on paper what you really want to see out of your year ahead. Now note that these are intentions. They are not full blown goals. So that's something that you'll do later. And then the last piece is just catch, capturing any little ahas that have come up through the process that you don't want to forget. When you're done with this and when it's complete, you will begin to work on goals and you'll start setting those goals for the next year. You'll, yes, there will be a template that I will be able to help you with when we get to that point. But for now, this is all of your work is getting to those intentions. Goal setting will be part of the next phase. So I applaud you on taking this time out to really work on your business, not just in it. This is what helps you live a life that is all out, one that's yours, where you're totally vibing on what it is that you want to do, what you are here to do on this earth. And it should be joyful. If it's not, it's not going to be sustainable and it's not going to be hella motivating to keep going. I want you to find that joy. I want you to find the ability to sustain it and to know that your business is simply one facet of the bigger picture and the bigger arc of your life. All right. Enjoy it. Talk soon.